Old Chinese, also called Archaic Chinese in older works, is the oldest attested stage of Chinese, and the ancestor of all modern varieties of Chinese. The earliest examples of Chinese are divinatory inscriptions on oracle bones from around 1250 BC, in the late Shang dynasty. Bronze inscriptions became plentiful during the following Zhou dynasty. The latter part of the Zhou period saw a flowering of literature, including classical works such as the Analects, the Mencius, and the Zhuawan. These works served as models for literary Chinese, or classical Chinese, which remained the written standard until the early 20th century, thus preserving the vocabulary and grammar of late Old Chinese. Old Chinese was written with an early form of Chinese characters, with each character representing a monosyllabic word. Although the script is not alphabetic, most characters were created by adapting a character for a similar sounding word. Scholars have used the phonetic information in the script and the rhyming practice of ancient poetry to reconstruct Old Chinese phonology, corresponding roughly to the Western Zhou period in the early part of the first millennium BC. Although many of the finer details remain unclear, most scholars agree that Old Chinese differed from Middle Chinese in lacking retroflex and palatal obstruents but having initial consonant clusters of some sort, and in having voiceless nasals and liquids. Most recent reconstructions also describe Old Chinese as a language without tones, but having consonant clusters at the end of the syllable, which developed into tone distinctions in Middle Chinese. Most researchers trace the core vocabulary of Old Chinese to Sino-Tibetan, with much early borrowing from neighboring languages. During the Zhou period, the originally monosyllabic vocabulary was augmented with polysyllabic words formed by compounding and reduplication. Several derivational affixes have also been identified. However the language lacked inflection, and indicated grammatical relationships using word order and grammatical particles. Classification Middle Chinese and its southern neighbors Kra Dai, Hmong Mean and the Vietic branch of Austroasiatic have similar tone systems, syllable structure, grammatical features and lack of inflection, but these are believed to be aerial features spread by diffusion rather than indicating common descent. The most widely accepted hypothesis is that Chinese belongs to the Sino-Tibetan language family, together with Burmese, Tibetan and many other languages spoken in the Himalayas and the Southeast Asian Massif. The evidence consists of some hundreds of proposed cognate words, including such basic vocabulary as the following Although the relationship was first proposed in the early 19th century and is now broadly accepted, reconstruction of Sino-Tibetan is much less developed than that of families such as Indo-European or Austronesian. Although Old Chinese is by far the earliest attested member of the family, its logographic script does not clearly indicate the pronunciation of words. Other difficulties have included the great diversity of the languages, the lack of inflection in many of them, and the effects of language contact. In addition, many of the smaller languages are spoken in mountainous areas that are difficult to reach, including several sensitive border zones. Initial consonants generally correspond regarding place and manner of articulation, but voicing and aspiration are much less regular, and prefixal elements vary widely between languages. Some researchers believe that both these phenomena reflect lost minor syllables. Proto-Tibeto-Burman as reconstructed by Benedict and Matasov lacks an aspiration distinction on initial stops and affricates. Aspiration in Old Chinese often corresponds to pre-initial consonants in Tibetan and Lolo-Burmese, and is believed to be a Chinese innovation arising from earlier prefixes. Proto-Sino-Tibetan is reconstructed with a six-vowel system as in recent reconstructions of Old Chinese, with the Tibeto-Burman languages distinguished by the merger of the mid-central vowel asterisk, with asterisk a. The other vowels are preserved by both, with some alternation between asterisk e and asterisk i, and between asterisk o and asterisk u. History the earliest known written records of the Chinese language were found at the Yingshu site near modern Anyang identified as the last capital of the Shang dynasty, and date from about 1250 BC. 
These are the oracle bones, short inscriptions carved on tortoise plastrons and ox scapulae for divinatory purposes, as well as a few brief bronze inscriptions. The language written is undoubtedly an early form of Chinese, but is difficult to interpret due to the limited subject matter and high proportion of proper names. Only half of the 4,000 characters used have been identified with certainty. Little is known about the grammar of this language, but it seems much less reliant on grammatical particles than classical Chinese. From early in the Western Zhou period, around 1000 BC, the most important recovered texts are bronze inscriptions, many of considerable length. Even longer pre-classical texts on a wide range of subjects have also been transmitted through the literary tradition. The oldest parts of the Book of Documents, the Classic of Poetry and the I Ching also date from the early Zhou period, and closely resemble the bronze inscriptions in vocabulary, syntax, and style. A greater proportion of this more varied vocabulary has been identified than for the oracular period, the four centuries preceding the unification of China in 221 BC, the later spring and autumn period and the warring states period, constitute the Chinese classical period in the strict sense. There are many bronze inscriptions from this period, but they are vastly outweighed by a rich literature written in ink on bamboo and wooden slips and, toward the end of the period, silk. Although these are perishable materials, and many books were destroyed in the burning of books and burying of scholars in the Qin dynasty, other texts have been transmitted as copies. Such works from this period as the Analects, the Classic of Filial Piety, the Mencius and the Zuo Zuan have been admired as models of prose style since the Han dynasty. The classical Chinese of such works formed the basis of literary Chinese, which remained the written standard until the early 20th century. Script Each character of the script represented a single Old Chinese word. Most scholars believe that these words were monosyllabic, though some have recently suggested that a minority of them had minor presyllables. The development of these characters follows the same three stages that characterized Egyptian hieroglyphs, Mesopotamian cuneiform script and the Maya script. Some words could be represented by pictures, later stylized, such as ri ri, sun, ren ren, person, and mu mu, tree, wood, by abstract symbols such as san san, three, and shang shang, up, or by composite symbols such as lin lin, forest. Two trees. About 1,000 of the oracle bone characters, nearly a quarter of the total, are of this type, though 300 of them have not yet been deciphered. Though the pictographic origins of these characters are apparent, they have already undergone extensive simplification and conventionalization. Evolved forms of most of these characters are still in common use today. Next, words that could not be represented pictorially, such as abstract terms and grammatical particles, were signified by borrowing characters of pictorial origin representing similar sounding words. The rebus strategy. The word li tremble was originally written with the character li for li chestnut. The pronoun and modal particle qi was written with the character qi originally representing g. Winnowing basket. Sometimes the borrowed character would be modified slightly to distinguish it from the original, as with wu wu. Don't. A borrowing of mu mu. Mother. Later, phonetic loans were systematically disambiguated by the addition of semantic indicators, usually to the less common word. The word li. Tremble was later written with the character Li, formed by adding the symbol Shin, a variant of Shin Shin. Heart. The less common original word Ji, winnowing basket, came to be written with the compound Ji, obtained by adding the symbol Ju Zu, bamboo, to the character. Such phono semantic compound characters were already used extensively on the oracle bones, and the vast majority of characters created since then have been of this type. In the Shuao and Jiezi, a dictionary compiled in the 2nd century, 82% of the 9,353 characters are classified as phono-semantic compounds. 
In the light of the modern understanding of Old Chinese phonology, researchers now believe that most of the characters originally classified as semantic compounds also have a phonetic nature. These developments were already present in the oracle bone script, possibly implying a significant period of development prior to the extant inscriptions. This may have involved writing on perishable materials, as suggested by the appearance on oracle bones of the character CC. Records. The character is thought to depict bamboo or wooden strips tied together with leather thongs, a writing material known from later archaeological finds. Development and simplification of the script continued during the pre classical and classical periods, with characters becoming less pictorial and more linear and regular, with rounded strokes being replaced by sharp angles. The language developed compound words, so that characters came to represent morphemes, though almost all morphemes could be used as independent words. Hundreds of morphemes of two or more syllables also entered the language, and were written with one phono-semantic compound character per syllable. During the Warring States period, writing became more widespread, with further simplification and variation, particularly in the eastern states. The most conservative script prevailed in the western state of Qin, which would later impose its standard on the whole of China. Phonology Old Chinese phonology has been reconstructed using a variety of evidence, including the phonetic components of Chinese characters, rhyming practice in the classic of poetry and Middle Chinese reading pronunciations described in such works as the Qiyan, a rhyme dictionary published in 601 AD. Although many details are still disputed, recent formulations are in substantial agreement on the core issues. For example, the old Chinese initial consonants recognized by Li Fang Kui and William Baxter are given below, with Baxter's mostly tentative additions given in parentheses. Various initial clusters have been proposed, especially clusters of asterisk s with other consonants, but this area remains unsettled. Most scholars posit optional medials asterisk r, asterisk j, and the combination asterisk rj as the origin of the retroflex and palatal obstruents of Middle Chinese, as well as many of its vowel contrasts. However, the palatal medial asterisk J has been challenged on a number of grounds, and a variety of different realizations for this distinction have been used in recent constructions. Reconstructions since the 1980s usually propose six vowels. Vowels could optionally be followed by the same codas as in Middle Chinese, a glide asterisk J or asterisk W, a nasal asterisk M, asterisk N or asterisk, or a stop asterisk P, asterisk T or asterisk K. Some scholars also allow for a labiovelar coda asterisk k. Most scholars now believe that Old Chinese lacked the tones found in later stages of the language, but had optional post codas asterisk and asterisk s, which developed into the Middle Chinese rising and departing tones respectively. Grammar Little is known of the grammar of the language of the oracular and pre-classical periods, as the texts are often of a ritual or formulaic nature, and much of their vocabulary has not been deciphered. In contrast, the rich literature of the Warring States period has been extensively analyzed. Having no inflection, Old Chinese was heavily reliant on word order, grammatical particles, and inherent word classes. Word classes Classifying Old Chinese words is not always straightforward, as words were not marked for function, word classes overlapped, and words of one class could sometimes be used in roles normally reserved for a different class. The task is more difficult with written texts than it would have been for speakers of Old Chinese, because the derivational morphology is often hidden by the writing system. For example, the verb asterisk ske, to block, and the derived noun asterisk skes, frontier were both written with the same character psi. Personal pronouns exhibit a wide variety of forms in Old Chinese texts, possibly due to dialectal variation. There were two groups of first-person pronouns. Asterisk Lia Yu, Asterisk Lja Yu, Asterisk Li Tai and Asterisk Lurjum Gen. 
asterisk a wu and asterisk aj wo in the oracle bone inscriptions, the asterisk l pronouns were used by the king to refer to himself, and the asterisk forms for the Shang people as a whole. This distinction is largely absent in later texts, and the asterisk l forms disappeared during the classical period. In the post-Han period, Wu came to be used as the general first-person pronoun. Second-person pronouns included asterisk nya ru, asterisk njj er, asterisk nj er, asterisk njak ruo. The forms ru and er continued to be used interchangeably until their replacement by the northwestern variant ni, modern Mandarin ni, in the Tang period. However, in some Min dialects the second-person pronoun is derived from Ru. Case distinctions were particularly marked among third-person pronouns. There was no third-person subject pronoun, but asterisk tjg, originally a distal demonstrative, came to be used as a third-person object pronoun in the classical period. The possessive pronoun was originally asterisk kjot jue, replaced in the classical period by asterisk jqi. In the post-Han period, qi came to be used as the general third-person pronoun. It survives in some Wu dialects, but has been replaced by a variety of forms elsewhere. There were demonstrative and interrogative pronouns, but no indefinite pronouns with the meanings something or nothing. The distributive pronouns were formed with a asterisk k suffix. Asterisk djuk shu. Which one? From asterisk djuj shui. Who? Asterisk kak gay. Each one. From asterisk kya ju. All. Asterisk wee kuo. Someone. From asterisk wee ju. There is. Asterisk mok mo. No one. From asterisk mja wu. There is no. As in the modern language, localizers compass directions above, inside, and the like could be placed after nouns to indicate relative positions. They could also precede verbs to indicate the direction of the action. Nouns denoting times were another special class, time words, they usually preceded the subject to specify the time of an action. However the classifiers so characteristic of modern Chinese only became common in the Han period and the subsequent northern and southern dynasties, old Chinese verbs, like their modern counterparts, did not show tense or aspect, these could be indicated with adverbs or particles if required. Verbs could be transitive or intransitive. As in the modern language, adjectives were a special kind of intransitive verb, and a few transitive verbs could also function as modal auxiliaries or as prepositions. Adverbs described the scope of a statement or various temporal relationships. They included two families of negatives starting with asterisk p and asterisk m, such as asterisk pj bu and asterisk mja wu. Modern northern varieties derive the usual negative from the first family, while southern varieties preserve the second. The language had no adverbs of degree until late in the classical period. Particles were function words serving a range of purposes. As in the modern language, there were sentence final particles marking imperatives and yes, no questions. Other sentence final particles expressed a range of connotations, the most important being asterisk ljaj ye, expressing static factuality, and asterisk ye, implying a change. Other particles included the subordination marker asterisk tjg and the nominalizing particles asterisk jj agent and asterisk surja suo object. Conjunctions could join nouns or clauses. Sentence structure As with English and modern Chinese, old Chinese sentences can be analyzed as a subject, a noun phrase, sometimes understood, followed by a predicate, which could be of either nominal or verbal type. Before the classical period, nominal predicates consisted of a copular particle asterisk wjijy followed by a noun phrase. The negated copula asterisk pjwjij bu y is attested in oracle bone inscriptions, and later fused as asterisk pjj fe. In the classical period, nominal predicates were constructed with the sentence final particle asterisk ljaj ye instead of the copula y, but fe was retained as the negative form, with which ye was optional. 
the copular verb shi of literary and modern Chinese dates from the Han period. In Old Chinese the word was a near demonstrative. This as in modern Chinese, but unlike most Tibeto-Burman languages, the basic word order in a verbal sentence was subject-verb-object. Besides inversions for emphasis, there were two exceptions to this rule. A pronoun object of a negated sentence or an interrogative pronoun object would be placed before the verb. An additional noun phrase could be placed before the subject to serve as the topic. As in the modern language, yes, no questions were formed by adding a sentence final particle, and requests for information by substituting an interrogative pronoun for the requested element. Modification In general, Old Chinese modifiers preceded the words they modified. Thus relative clauses were placed before the noun, usually marked by the particle asterisk tjg, in a role similar to modern Chinese dede. A common instance of this construction was adjectival modification, since the Old Chinese adjective was a type of verb, as in the modern language, but ji was usually omitted after monosyllabic adjectives. Similarly, adverbial modifiers, including various forms of negation, usually occurred before the verb. As in the modern language, time adjuncts occurred either at the start of the sentence or before the verb, depending on their scope, while duration adjuncts were placed after the verb. Instrumental and place adjuncts were usually placed after the verb phrase. These later moved to a position before the verb, as in the modern language. Vocabulary The improved understanding of Old Chinese phonology has enabled the study of the origins of Chinese words rather than the characters with which they are written. Most researchers trace the core vocabulary to a Sino-Tibetan ancestor language, with much early borrowing from other neighboring languages. The traditional view was that Old Chinese was an isolating language, lacking both inflection and derivation, but it has become clear that words could be formed by derivational affixation, reduplication and compounding. Most authors consider only monosyllabic roots, but Baxter and Laurent Sigart also propose disyllabic roots in which the first syllable is reduced, as in modern Khmer. Loanwords During the Old Chinese period, Chinese civilization expanded from a compact area around the Lower Wei River and Middle Yellow River eastwards across the North China Plain to Shandong and then south into the valley of the Yangtze. There are no records of the non-Chinese languages formerly spoken in those areas and subsequently displaced by the Chinese expansion. However they are believed to have contributed to the vocabulary of Old Chinese, and may be the source of some of the many Chinese words whose origins are still unknown. Jerry Norman and Mei Su Lin have identified early Austroasiatic loanwords in Old Chinese, possibly from the peoples of the lower Yangtze Basin known to ancient Chinese as the Yu. For example, the early Chinese name asterisk crow, zhang zhang, for the Yangtze was later extended to a general word for river in South China. Norman and May suggest that the word is cognate with Vietnamese song from asterisk krong and mon cru, river. Haudricourt and Strecker have proposed a number of borrowings from the Hmong Mien languages. These include terms related to rice cultivation, which began in the middle Yangtze Valley. Asterisk ja, yang yang, rice seedling, from proto mung mean asterisk ja. Asterisk lu, dao dao, unhulled rice, from proto mung mean asterisk imblao. Other words are believed to have been borrowed from languages to the south of the Chinese area, but it is not clear which was the original source, e.g. Asterisk zija, shang shang, elephant can be compared with Mon Khoi, proto thai asterisk Jack and Burmese Cha. Asterisk K, G G. Chicken. Versus proto thai asterisk Kib proto Mung Mien asterisk Kai and proto Viet Muong asterisk R Ka. In ancient times, the Tarim Basin was occupied by speakers of Indo-European Tocharian languages, the source of asterisk MJIT, Mi Mi. Honey. From proto tocharian asterisk mount, where asterisk m is palatalized, cf. Tocharian bmit, cognate with English meat. The northern neighbors of Chinese contributed such words as asterisk dok, do do, calf. Compare Mongolian tool and Manchu tuxen. 
Affixation Chinese philologists have long noted words with related meanings and similar pronunciations, sometimes written using the same character. Henri Maspero attributed some of these alternations to consonant clusters resulting from derivational affixes. Subsequent work has identified several such affixes, some of which appear to have cognates in other Sino Tibetan languages. A common case is derivation by tone change in which words in the departing tone appear to be derived from words in other tones. If Haudricourt's theory of the origin of the departing tone is accepted, these tonal derivations can be interpreted as the result of a derivational suffix asterisk s. As Tibetan has a similar suffix, it may be inherited from Sino-Tibetan. Examples include, asterisk dz jin, jin jin to exhaust, and asterisk dz jins, jin jin, exhausted, consumed, ash, asterisk kit, ga ga, to tie, and asterisk kits, gg, hair knot, asterisk nup, na na, to bring in, and asterisk nuts, inside, asterisk junk, gg, to weave, and asterisk jeeks, gg, silk cloth, compare written Tibetan thag, to weave, and thags, woven, cloth. Another alternation involves transitive verbs with an unvoiced initial and passive or stative verbs with a voiced initial, asterisk kens, gngn, to see, and asterisk Asterisk ends, xian xian, to appear, asterisk kra, jiao jiao, to mix, and asterisk ra, xiao yao, mixed, confused, asterisk tria, zhang zhang, to stretch, and asterisk dria, zhang chong, long. Some scholars hold that the transitive verbs with voiceless initials are basic and the voiced initials reflect a detransitivizing nasal prefix. Others suggest that the transitive verbs were derived by the addition of a causative prefix asterisk s to a stative verb, causing devoicing of the following voiced initial. Both postulated prefixes have parallels in other Sino-Tibetan languages, in some of which they are still productive. Several other affixes have been proposed. Reduplication and compounding Old Chinese morphemes were originally monosyllabic, but during the Western Zhou period many new bisyllabic words entered the language. For example, over 30% of the vocabulary of the Mencius is polysyllabic, including 9% proper names, though monosyllabic words occur more frequently, accounting for 80 to 90% of the text. Many words, particularly expressive adjectives and adverbs, were formed by varieties of reduplication, full reduplication, in which the syllable is repeated, as in asterisk juj juj, way 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 way, tall and grand, and asterisk ljo ljo, u u u u, happy and at ease, rhyming semi reduplication, in which only the final is repeated, as in asterisk iv li, yao tiao yao tiao, elegant, beautiful. The initial of the second syllable is often asterisk l or asterisk r, alliterative semi-reduplication, in which the initial is repeated, as in asterisk tsrjum tsrjaj, kancha chenchi, irregular, uneven. Vowel alternation, especially of asterisk e and asterisk o, as in asterisk tsjek tsjok, si ku kasu, busy, and asterisk ri ro, xie hu ziho. Carefree and happy. Other bisyllabic morphemes include the famous asterisk alep, hu dia hude, butterfly, from the Zhuangzi. More words, especially nouns, were formed by compounding, including qualification of one noun by another, placed in front, as in asterisk ma k ra, mu gua mugua, quince, literally, tree melon. An asterisk traju njit, zhang ri zongri, noon, literally, middle day. Verb object compounds, as in asterisk sj mura, si ma sima, master of the household, literally, manage horse. An asterisk tsakts rec, zuo si zuoche, scribe, literally, make writing. However, the components of compounds were not bound morphemes, they could still be used separately. A number of bimorphemic syllables appeared in the classical period, resulting from the fusion of words with following unstressed particles or pronouns. Thus, the negatives asterisk pjut fu and asterisk mjut wu are viewed as fusions of the negators asterisk pj bu and asterisk mjo wu, respectively, with a third person pronoun asterisk tjg. Notes References Works cited Further reading
External links Miyaki, Mark, 2001. Laurent Sagart, The Roots of Old Chinese. Cahiers de Linguistique AC Orientale, 32, 257-268, Review of Sagart, 1999. Miyaki, Mark, 2011. Why are rhinos late? Old Chinese articles. Miyaki, Mark, 2012. A asterisk slow lucian to the PRO blem. Old Chinese articles. Miyaki, Mark, 2013. PRI Zu Ner. Old Chinese articles. Miyaki, Mark, 2013. Did Old Chinese palatal initials always condition higher vowels? Old Chinese articles. Miyaki, Mark, 2013. Are Old Chinese disharmonic disyllabic words borrowings? Old Chinese articles. Miyaki, Mark, 2015. Did Old Chinese really have so much asterisk R? Old Chinese articles. Schusler, Axel, 2000. Book Review, The Roots of Old Chinese. PDF, Language and Linguistics, 1, 2, 257-257, Review of Sagart, 1999. Starostin, Jorge, 2009. Axel Schusler, ABC Etymological Dictionary of Old Chinese. PDF, Journal of Language Relationship, 1-155-162. Review of Schusler, 2007.